I sucked in learning. Do you want to hear about it? I was 22 when started working for a leading training and consultancy company. Not to forget to mention the youngest ever hired key account manager. I mean, how cool was I? Self-confident, attractive, communicative, with new super high goals and superpowers of my own. Diamond, I would say. Apparently, unsalted. It were one of the hardest 19 months in my life. Every sales meeting was a disaster, an exam, a thriller. I was so lost that even couldn't separate important information from unimportant. But I did two things to at least look professional. First, I simply retyped every single word I could identify during the meetings. And second, I just nodded the head as a decorative bulldog, you know, found in one of those taxi cabs. And yet, I was lacking professional knowledge, experience, some necessary competencies. But what's worse, I was slowly losing my confidence. Every day was a step back, I mean, a huge step back. I can easily recall my tight fist, you know, and clenched jaw most of the times after work. Tense muscles ready for a fight, for one long-lasting fight. But do you know what fighters do? They go to bath and start writing war slogans. In that time, Facebook posts about high goals and never giving up. And this is exactly what I did, actually. But come on, I mean, I was macho, you know, hide the tears and never ever quit. So I started reading some of the top motivational books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Result? Still couldn't win a fight. My attitude in trying effort. So I started reading biographies like Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson, Into the Wild by John Crocker, Warrior of a Life by Paolo Coelho. Did not become Steve nor someone else people would listen to. It's all about habits, I said, and I continued reading, like Never Eat Alone by Kate Ferrazzi, The Outlier, Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell, uh, Sacred Hoop, Spiritual Lessons of a Hardwood Warrior, not to mention loads of TED Talks, documentaries, inspiring speeches. I really, really tried to follow. But do you know where I ended up? In United Kingdom. <laughs> London, to be specific. Working as a porter, to be precise. Serving rich and poor dads 12 hours a day. Thanks, Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> I self-help myself. Now I even know a name for the efforts I put. Imagine, self-help industry is worth $11 billion just in the US every year. I mean, billions. And this sector is still on the rise with 5.5% annual growth. But the funny thing is that the purchaser of a self-help book or any other self-help tool is the same person who already purchased one in the last 18 months. So how much good does the self-help industry is really doing for me and my fellow army? Right after London, I moved to beautiful city Maastricht in Netherlands. Uh, during the nights, I worked in a hotel. During the days, I studied my master. And it was something special about that time. I mean, completely different to what I felt and experienced while working in a consultancy company. Every night or morning, just before falling asleep, I felt much stronger compared to waking up. I mean, I could easily sense my personal growth. It was all over my body, my mind, my veins, my returning confidence. The only times I kept falling asleep without it were those rare once in a three week parties with my Greek friends and Uzo drinks. But even then, I fulfilled myself with so much good energy and new thoughts about life, about decisions, about past and the future. And I started thinking, like, what was all wrong about all that time? I mean, where all the difference comes from? But let's move aside for a minute. 2004, TEDx attender Mikhail Shishkishke. Damn it, Chick, as most of his students refer to him, had a brilliant talk called Flow, the secret to happiness. Flow, as most of you know, is a state of complete involvement in an activity. It occurs when we are fully engaged in what we are doing. In other words, if it's too easy, you get bored, and that just doesn't inspire action. But if it's too hard, you get pushed into a state of anxiety, and that kills motivation. In fact, most of the long-term goals require skills that we don't even have when we set those goals. 
Have you ever heard about anyone who managed to get to the Mount Everest from the very first time? You haven't. I mean, because it's impossible. Your muscles ain't ready, your lungs ain't ready, your mind and brain ain't ready. And even though it's just a metaphor, very often when we think about having a mentor or advisor to learn their experience, we think about connecting with the smartest and the most advanced professionals possible. And this is where it all gets tricky. The best mentor for you depends where you are on your learning curve. Either you're a beginner, a practitioner, or an expert. If you are a beginner, an extreme expert would not be an ideal mentor because of the difference between your understanding and use of experience at his. It would be better to connect with someone who's like one or two steps above you in terms of skills, possibly a late beginner or an early practitioner. People at those levels would still be new enough to the skill area you're trying to learn, they would remember what it's like to be a beginner, and most importantly, have tips and tricks to share, the ones that experts have since forgotten. For practitioners, the expert may be the perfect match because these mentors can help you move to the next level and show how to apply your skill box and turn knowledge into wisdom. Back then at work, I had like all the resources I needed, but my goals were too high, my ego too strong, it just did not let me ask for help or support. Instead, I chose to learn from world-class heroes through books and other self-help tools. Flow? Not possible. While in Maastricht, I was appointed to group coaching sessions with a lecturer as my coach and my students' friends as my buddies, and they all helped me with identifying my primary goal, which was to find courage to share opinion, overcoming public speaking fears, you know, and sweats as a result. And I did, and not only because of those uh, manageable goals and engagement which follows, but mostly because of those constant tips, support and inspiring eye glances while me being in action. All in all, of course, leading to flow. That's where all the difference comes from, from people who are on the same or close learning curves. Now I'm a sales manager in the same consultancy company I had to quit, every day juggling with a team of five brilliant people. And it's not a matcha talk anymore. I have an example of me losing and winning at the same time. I calmly share my weaknesses, abilities and disabilities, strong and weak competencies with you, but in return, asking for your tips and your experience to consistently grow. Look around. I mean it. <laughs> On your right, your left, in front and back. They are your teachers. I mean, these people are your mentors and the biggest inspirations. The ones you really need this very moment. Stop wasting money on self-help tools, rather reach out to right people and fast in your learning. And you better don't suck it. Once you build your skills in different areas, begin giving back to those around you as a mentor and advisor. This will not only help those who want to learn from you, but it will help you grow. So I wish you to become followers in one sphere and leaders in another. Thank you.